Thank you for watching today. I'm Jerry Savelle. I appreciate you joining with me. And I pray in Jesus' name that as you watch the broadcast, you're going to receive some great insight into the plans of God for not only your life right now, but for the future, praise God. God wants you to have a wonderful, exciting, blessed, and prosperous future. And you can have, and if you'll depend on His Word and the Holy Spirit to lead you, then praise God, you can enter into the best life that you've ever dreamed possible. We're talking about, once again, the spirit of seeing and knowing. From the writings of the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where he talked about the gifts of the Spirit, and he, he referred to them as the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of knowledge. I learned many years ago from Kenneth Hagin that he referred to them as the spirit of seeing and knowing. And that's what I'm teaching about on the broadcast today and been talking about it for the last several weeks. I'm going to take you into the service here in Heritage of Faith Christian Center where I was teaching our congregation about the spirit of seeing and knowing. But just before we go into that service, let me read something to you from the Apostle Paul. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. I pray that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened so that you might know. See, that's talking about the spirit of seeing and knowing. God wants you to experience this. So watch now, and I'll show you how. Let's go to 2 Kings, first of all, chapter 6. <clears throat> and look down at verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place. For thither the Syrians are come down. Now notice this prophet of God saw in the spirit what the Syrian army was about to do. And so God gave him a strategy by the word of knowledge to take to the king of Israel. And notice he said, don't go this way because uh, there's a trap there, so to speak. And then he goes on to say, and the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there, not once, not twice, nor twice. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? In other words, he thought he had a traitor in the camp. That's right. And this traitor was going to the king of Israel and letting him know in advance his plans. But it was the word of wisdom that came to the prophet of God. Right. Amen, or the word of knowledge. And verse 12 says, And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elijah, the prophet, that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in your bedchamber. Wow. The king of Syria is plotting against Israel, the king of Israel, and the spirit of God reveals to the prophet of God what he's saying in his bedchamber, in secret, in advance. So the prophet tells the king of Israel and they avoid you know, this, this thing that the king of Syria was going to do. What happened? God gave a strategy yes. through the word of knowledge. Amen. Now go to 1 Kings chapter 17. Once again, one commentary states that these two gifts relate to strategies and insights, which only God can give. And then it also says, they are given to assist God's people in continuing to go in the right direction. That's why God would give us this word. Amen. Now, this is quite lengthy, and I'm not going to take the time to read it all, but I would encourage you to do so, even if you've already read it before. Read it again, that entire 17th chapter of 1 Kings. 
And it has to do with Elijah and God speaking to him and telling him to, to go to a certain brook and uh, that God would cause the birds to sustain him while he was there. And so in obedience, Elijah went to that brook and the birds, the ravens brought meat and flesh to him and he was sustained. But then the brook dried up. And then it says, and the word of the Lord came to him and gave him a new strategy. Hallelujah. A new strategy so that the prophet could be sustained. He said, now I want you to go to Zarephath and there is a widow woman there and I have commanded her to sustain thee. However, when he got to Zarephath, he found the woman out gathering sticks and he spoke to her and she said, I'm gathering a few sticks so that my son and I can eat and die. She was preparing to die. But God told the prophet, she will sustain you. How can a dead woman sustain you? That's right. Come on. And it's almost like Elijah, well, he did. He just ignored what she said. And he said, make me a little cake first. Aren't you glad CNN wasn't there? <laughs> Breaking news. Prophet takes widow woman's last cake. <laughs> Amen. But that was the strategy God gave him. He said, tell her to make you a little cake first. So she did. She went and did. Right. Underline that phrase. She went and did. Right. It's one thing to get a strategy, but you got to carry it out. That's right. She went and did. It's one thing for me to tell you that God told me to establish this point of contact, which we're going to talk about next Sunday, and you hear it, but you don't do it. So whose fault would it be that you don't enter in? Thank you for your enthusiasm. You can, you can see the story. You can see this illustrated in the story of Naaman the leper. When, when the, the Lord used this man to tell Naaman, well, the prophet told his servant to go tell Naaman. Naaman. The prophet wouldn't even come out and talk to him. He sent his servant and said, tell him to go jump in the river seven times. And when the servant told him that, he got mad. He got upset. Well, I thought surely the prophet would come out and, you know, and do the razzle-dazzle thing and I'd be healed. But no, he sent his servant out and said, go jump in the river Jordan, dip yourself seven times. And when you come up, you'll be cleansed of the leprosy. Well, he walked off mad because that's not the way he wanted God to do it. <laughs> and almost missed out on his blessing. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't, want, I don't want to do what Brother Jerry said. Well, that's between you and God. I'm just, I'm just being obedient to the Lord. I have to stand before God for being obedient. Yes. Amen. 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 And then finally, the, the, the servant said, well, if God had asked you to, or the, if the prophet had asked you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you do it? Well, just do this. What do you got to lose by obeying? And he went and jumped in the river. And when he came up the seventh time, he was totally cleansed of the leper. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of the leprosy, rather. Amen. Amen. It pays to obey God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if the Lord had told me to tell you, go jump in Benbrook Lake seven times, and the seventh time you come up, you'd have supernatural increase. Well, I wonder how many people do that. Thank you for your confidence. If I didn't know the Lord told me to tell you that, I wouldn't even do it. <laughs> I stand on the shore and watch you. <laughs> but God didn't ask us to do something hard. Amen. Anybody can do this. 
Hallelujah. So notice here the, the operation of the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. The spirit of seeing and knowing. Can you say amen? amen? Seeing and knowing. So God is giving us a strategy. I remember uh, back in 1981, I was preaching Brother Copeland in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I had a divine appearance of the Lord on Thursday afternoon of that meeting. And the Lord said to me, my people are in financial famine and I'm going to reveal to you the keys that will bring them out. And boy, he did. And, and I mean, that, that room was filled with the Shekinah glory of God. Amen. Carolyn said, are you going to tell Brother Copeland about this? I said, no, he'll pick it up in the spirit. So we went over to the meeting, sat on the front row with the other speakers and Brother Copeland got up to preach and he couldn't preach. He just stopped and said, Jerry, come up here. The Lord visited you this afternoon. Come tell us what he said. And I went up there and told the people what the Lord said to me. We established our point of contact. I'm still getting testimonies to this day of the breakthroughs that people were having as a result of that message and that strategy. Hallelujah. Still. I mean, everywhere I go, particularly where I've preached it all over the world, people will say, Brother Jerry, you remember when you came here in back of the 80s and preached on this? I said, oh yeah, I'll never forget that. Man, we had some of the greatest breakthroughs we've ever experienced. Hallelujah. Not only God gave me a word of knowledge, but also a strategy. Amen? A strategy. That's important. Uh, go with me to... Uh, 2 Kings chapter 7 for a moment. 2 Kings chapter 7. <clears throat> Notice here in verse 7, <clears throat> in verse, or chapter 7 in verse 1, then Elijah said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Now I think a lot of people perhaps might heed what I say if my name was Elijah Savelle. <laughs> but it's not. It's Jerry. Jerry Savelle. But I want to show you here, some people wouldn't even believe what Elijah said. Notice it says, Elijah, Elijah said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Look at verse two. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Now notice this man questioned the prophet and said, I don't, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't believe that could happen. I mean, if God opened windows in heaven and poured it out, maybe it would happen, but not likely. And he wouldn't believe it. He wouldn't receive it. And the prophet said, oh, you're going to see it, but you're not going to partake of it. Amen. And you know the story. By the next day, I won't go into all that. You can read it yourself. But by the next day is exactly the way the prophet said it. If you drop down to verse 19, and the Lord answered the man of God and said, Now, behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. That man did not partake of the blessing that came because he wouldn't receive the prophetic word. Amen? Amen. Well, Brother Jerry, I'm not going to experience supernatural increase if I don't believe what you say. Well, I'm, I don't want to put it that strong, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on. 
I'm not saying this by natural human knowledge. I'm saying this by the Holy Spirit. Supernatural increase beyond anything you've ever experienced before. I don't know about you, but I'm watching for that door. I'm looking for that door. Hallelujah. He didn't say doors, plural. In fact, I, I, I asked him about it. I said, God, why didn't you say doors? He said, all it takes is one. All it takes is one. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, I'm looking for that one door. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that he couldn't open more and more doors, but one door with God opening it, that would settle everything. Can you say amen? One door, praise God. So I'm looking for it. Amen. Now, I don't want to sound, you know, so stern and everything, but it's important that we mix our faith with the word preached. It's what the apostle Paul said. If you don't mix your word, mix your faith with the word preached, then it won't profit you. And I, I don't want anybody to fail to receive supernatural increase. Hey, if you experience supernatural increase, praise God, in some way, possibly, this church might possibly benefit from it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You could increase your tithes and offerings. Amen. You could build a building. Amen. You could send the missionaries around the world. Amen. I'm not against anybody in here experiencing supernatural increase. I want everybody in here to do it. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Like that man uh, in Mac Hammond's church years ago, where the Lord told me to lay hands on everybody in there. And I think there was probably over 1,000, 1,500 people in there. And he says, command supernatural increase to come on them. And I laid hands on every one of them. And sometime later, Mac Hammond gives me a call and says, Brother Jerry, you got to hear this testimony. One of the men you laid hands on came into my office this week and holding up a check and said, Brother Mac, I got my supernatural increase. And it was a check for $12 million. Wow. Amen. And then he held up another check and said, and here's my tithe, 1.2 million. 1.2 million. I said, Mag, do you mind sharing with me how that happened? He said, well, uh, his parents had bought some stock years ago. And over a period of time, they'd kind of forgotten about it and really assumed that it was worthless now. But after they passed away and he received his inheritance, he took that stock and found out it's worth $12 million. Wow. He cashed it in, praise God, and wrote the church a check for $1.2 million Ooh. as his tithe. Amen. Now, most church members wouldn't have done that. <laughs> the pastor would have got a postcard from the Bahamas <laughs> with them on their yacht saying, I got mine, hope you get yours. Yeah. Bye. But this is not like most churches. You would send the tithe. Hallelujah. Amen. I asked Mac, I asked Mac, I said, cover up the name. I don't want to know the name, but make a copy of that check for me so I can see it. I have it in my office, in my library. And I put it up on the wall. And I said, someday I'm going to write a tithe check for $1.2 million. Amen. That's the reason I wanted it. I wanted to see what a $1.2 million check, tithe check looked like. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you take a check out of your book and write $1.2 million, you know, to heritage your faith <laughs> or wherever and just put it in your desk in your bedroom somewhere and pull it out. Don't go, don't bring it to the church if you don't have the money to cover it. We've received some of them before. What was that, Joe? A million dollar check that guy gave us? A million dollar check. Boy, we were excited. A million dollars. We believe in for somebody to write a check for a million dollars. Man, it came and then found out. I said, now, Joe, you used to be a banker. Call that bank and ask for the president. See if it's good. He talked to the president. He said, well... This family could write checks for a million dollars all day long. But he said, they won't honor any of them that boy writes. He said, 
uh, this boy's got some mental problems. Said, so yeah, they got the money. They could write checks like this all day long, but we won't honor it because his parents told us not to. I said, Joe, hold on to that check. We're going to pray he gets in his right mind. <laughs> and I got, I got tickled. Norval Hayes, anybody remember Norval Hayes? Norval Hayes told me that he walked up to the guy. Uh, the guy walked up to Norval and wrote him a check for a million, uh, what's the Mexican currency? Peso. peso. A million peso. And Norval said, a million pesos? Where am I going to cash this? Well, it wasn't any good either. And then one day I preached on faith is like going upstream in a canoe. You're, you're going against the current. Living by faith is like going upstream in a canoe. The next morning that guy comes in with a canoe on top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, and not only that, he checked into a hotel here one time <laughs> and stayed for a couple of weeks and told the people that Jerry Savelle Ministries is covering the charge. <laughs> and they called Joe and said, have you got somebody here that you're taking care of the bill? No, we don't have anybody here. Well, this guy's been staying here for two weeks and you're covering the charge. <laughs> And I think Joe called his daddy and he said, put him on a bus and send him home, you know. But we still got that check. <laughs> he ever comes in his right mind, we cashing it, praise God. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So notice here, the prophet gave the prophetic word and, and he gave it in a setting where it was impossible to be fulfilled. The, the enemy has cut off the supply lines. Amen. And, and, and the enemy is about to overtake these people. They're just waiting for them to starve out, get weak and can't fight. And not even the rich in that city had anything to eat. And you remember these lepers. They were sitting there on the outside of the city because they're not allowed in the city. And one of them says, why do we sit here until we die? If we're going to die, let's die on the move. And they all got up, started marching into the enemy's camp, and God caused their footsteps to sound like an entire army. And it frightened the enemy so that they just got up and left the camp, left all their food, left all their treasures, everything, and then the people of God gathered it all up within 24 hours, what the prophet said, had completely come to pass. But the one man who said, ah, even if God opened windows in heaven and did that, it, it's impossible. Don't doubt God's ability. Are you ready for what God's about to do? Would you like to discover the biblical keys for knowing God's plan for you and your family? In today's special offer, you'll receive Jerry Savelle's new three-part audio teaching, The Spirit of Seeing and Knowing, and his faith-filled book, Receive God's Best. The principles revealed in this special package will equip and position you to be ready for what is coming. God doesn't want you in the dark. He desires to show you what He's about to do. Without revelation knowledge, God's people perish and miss out on His blessing. Now's the time to get in tune with God and live with confidence and faith for His plan. Don't delay any longer. Call or go online now to jerrysavelle.org and request your copy of the Seeing and Knowing special package. Your best days are ahead. Discover today how God reveals His plan so you can respond in faith and walk in His goodness and purpose. Did you receive from this study? I pray that you did. And I want to encourage you to order the special resources we have so that you can continue to learn how that you can operate in the spirit of seeing and knowing. You're a member of the body of Christ and you have every right to operate and to flow in the spirit of seeing and knowing. And it's very vital and very important for your success in the days ahead. You know, every year, since 1991, when Brother Copeland prophesied over me 
that I would enter into a new dimension of ministry. He said, you will become a seer into the spirit realm. God will show you things to come and then he'll hold you responsible for sharing them with the body of Christ everywhere he sends you. Since that time, I have set aside, set aside some special time just to seek the Lord as to what is on his agenda for the coming new year. Usually I do that during the month of October. But this past year, 2019, while I was flying to Australia with Brother Copeland, uh, uh, he sat back in his seat and decided to take a, a nap after a short time. And uh, I was just reading uh, a book that I had started. And then I got a little sleepy and I laid back in the chair and I closed my eyes and it seemed like it hadn't been 15 seconds past when the Spirit of God said to me, in 2020, I will open a new door and I'll cause supernatural increase to come into your life as never before. I knew that was a word not only for me, but for the body of Christ. It's a word for you. You see, the spirit of seeing and knowing. I saw in the spirit supernatural increase coming like never before. I, I, I heard in my spirit God say supernatural increase is coming like never before. And that's what I've been preaching about ever since that happened. And that happened actually on September the 9th, 2019. And I've been preaching this all over the world. And we're getting testimonies from people that are experiencing supernatural increase like never before. In fact, I heard some testimonies just this week uh, in some meetings I was in uh, uh, out in uh, West Texas and other different places. People are already experiencing supernatural increase. Now, how did I know that? How did I know that's the plan of God? It came through the spirit of seeing and knowing. And of course, the Holy Spirit is behind that. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, and I've said this many times, when he comes, he'll not only lead and guide you into all truth, but he'll show you things to come. You have every right to know what's on God's agenda. He can show you the pitfalls that Satan has set up for you. He can show you uh, the way that you should go where there seems to be no way. Get familiar with the ministry of the Holy Spirit and learn how to flow in the spirit of seeing and knowing. Now, if you want to continue your study, the resources are still available. Three CDs on the spirit of seeing and knowing and my little book entitled Receiving God's Best. Go to jerrysavelle.org for all the ordering information and we'll get it to you just as quick as we possibly can. Thank you once again for joining me and I pray in Jesus' name that your 2020 will be a year of supernatural increase. I'll see you next week.